To the storm of his pleasure dies From the bedpost and the racks This enticing echo marks and his voice replies But greater the love the more falls to its object Not to be born is the best for you mans After the kiss comes the impulse to throttle Break your embraces, dance while you can Forgiven, dreamer, and drunkard seen. The ladder is let down out of heaven, the laurel swinging from the martyr's blood, the children skipping where the weeper stood. The lover's natural, the beast's all good. Oh, some dreamer and drunkard seen. Today their sobriety bring. Parrot wise with death's reply, from whelping fear and nesting lie. What's in the echoes ring? The desires of the heart are crooked as corkscrews Not to be born is the best for you mans Second best is a formal order The dancer's pattern is dance while you can Well, not dance, stands for the figure is easy The tune is catching, it will not stop Dance till the stars fall down with the rafters Dance, dance, dance till you drown Well, not dance, stands for the figure is easy The tune is catching and it will not stop Dance to the stars, fall down with the rafters. Dance, dance, dance to the ground. Yeah. That was close, but that wasn't exactly the, room, the mood I was in. Oh, no, see, what I was thinking as I was driving along, uh, or uh, bicycling along on the West Side Highway, mm -hmm. seeing how they'd sh like they had strung cables along underneath it so that it wouldn't even collapse under the weight of the bicyclist, <laughs> it was that rotten. What I was thinking was that um, if they ever tear that pl thing down, they're probably going to find a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, missing things, like Judge Crater. <laughs> everybody knows that Judge Crater is buried somewhere in the West Side Highway. And that's what happened to him. He just got himself a steel and cement overcoat and ended up in the West Side Highway. So, um, somehow from that, my, my mind flipped to Gerald Ford in the White House. Gerald Ford in the White House. And, uh... Yeah. Jerry, you've been on my mind. I mean, you know, and, uh, he has. He has been on your mind. You don't have a song about him yet? Uh, tell He's you been president for almost a week, man, and you haven't written six songs about him? Uh, some people what? take a song right out of you, you know? Uh, I've been thinking about it. I thought if we went on long enough that something would emerge in that direction. I just have these, uh, you know, basic uh, uh, certain ideas on this matter. See, it was, it was strange. I was thinking of going back in the studio recently, and uh, one of the songs I was thinking of doing was a, a little ditty called The Impeachment Rag. Oh, but, man. but that one was cut out before its time. <coughs> they wiped up. So, so, I mean, you know, Joe Ford gave us some other things to think about. Um, hmm. What's that she has? I, I don't know, but... <laughs> Well, um... What does Gerald Ford make you think of? I didn't know that. You didn't know which? I don't know, but that's the... Th that's somehow that we're going to find out some things about Gerald Ford that we didn't know. Uh, yes, I think that, uh... Hmm. What kind of key should we put Gerald Ford in? <laughs> Z-flat, man. <laughs> <laughs> Augmented? Well, let me just see. Um, I really, I, it's really, hmm, Gerald Ford. I don't know, what kind of, what, what kind of mood does Gerald Ford put you in, Bob? Healing. Healing? 
He's a hero. <laughs> You'd say he was major, is that? Plastic surgeons have left the White House and they all smiled and they said it was gleaming. In a swimming pool, an April man swam across and smiled for his fans. And how is it now after charisma is shattered? And the demons have been all sent to the coast. In a man whose president is just like all of us, he makes his own breakfast, eats Wheaties and toast. We have none of the youthful and magical spirit. No one could lay that on a man been around so long. But he doesn't have that crippled image of Richard. What box can we put him in for it puts us in a box so long? Meanwhile, the drought is dust blowing Iowa. And overseas, the ships still now sail like sharks in the Mediterranean Valley. Water before Cyprus can stand. Well, Athena, she rose into the world on Cyprus. Or was it Venus? I guess my mythology is confused. An island of love sets another new pattern. And NATO's collaborators hum a new tune. The man of the peoples in the White House, he calls no distinction except 25 years time. Where he always voted with the party's chorus, and he thought enough like the Gilbert and Sullivan song never to speak his own mind. Yes, he has come in a wave of derision, and the political hosts are in flight. But it's kind of a strange and accurate feeling A new president sits in the White House tonight And all on the coast the liberals, some smiling They say you give him a chance, why he's just now sit down And the military bosses are rather beguiling the man's in the White House, direct line at last. Yeah, as the prices skyrocket down on the supermarket, rice and beans all oh, soon will be gone. Shelves they soon will be empty. Mr. Hoover, Gerald Ford, what then will be a song? Oh, well, I was riding my bicycle this night on the old highway, looking for a way. This highway fell out right from under me. My mouth hung right open, I had nothing to say. For 
From carnival to carnival, existence opens. From harem to harrow, the night howls and whines. The sirens they go by in deathly parade beside my castle in the island to ride. With visions of Calcutta staggering the gutter, looking for a way where the broken bottles chant like piece of the bread from the path to the bridge. But the bridge of something I cannot understand. Across this ford, you need more than a shallow ford to get across this one. Conservative without ideas, how will they put back together the mess? As that market plummets, careening, and all the brokers look broken now. Any smiles at the military must get their feeding, but everyone else can be hungry right now. So cut out any program that might help a person. Cut out any wasteful spending, he says. And all the politicians are smiling and whining. Wild, yes, they are triumphed at last. There's a man he's plays for his cleanliness. What do you expect of the soap that he used? What about does he? Brush his teeth gleaming. The man in the White House has got a white suit. If you want to take any telephone calls on the air, Larry, somebody just called and said very nice about you. Uh, he was a little disappointed when it turned out that you weren't somebody else, but uh -huh. but, uh, Can't please everybody. but he said he liked what you were doing very much, very much. No, he's gone. But somebody else did call earlier and said that they had something they wanted to say. So I guess. Uh, this is WBAI in New York City. Larry Estridge is uh, singing and playing his guitar. Sugar Blue is uh, leading him places that I've never seen him before with his harp. And uh, I think that the leading goes back and forth. It's really, whew. it's you. Two, how long have you two? Uh, I mean, how long has it been since you two found each other? When did this happen? Back two hours ago. Fantastic. Don't let each other out of your sight. Yeah. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Oh, um, I, I, I haven't even listened to the radio. Can you just tell <laughs> me on what's going on, or is this just a free-for-all? This, this is a free-for-all. Is, is this Steve Perth? What? Is this Steve 
Post? Yes. We, we really had a phase, <laughs> aren't we? We post. Wow. Hey, this is freaking weird. I want to know uh, John Mott. What? That's. I couldn't. Well, you know, everything happens, I suppose, at one time or another. But that Can you do a song about that? Hey, we'll, we'll let it go. Hey, man. Let's get something funky, man. Something funky. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, let's see what we can do with can, red, white, and blue. Can we make that funky? Well, if you want to, if you want to do it. I see. The presidents, they all ride and clear through. The kid who won the soapbox derby, he was cheating too. Annapolis cadets, they all been cheating on exams. People start looking around, find Uncle Sam has lost his pants. Well, you cheat on me, baby, I would cheat on you. Cheating is American, is red, white, and blue, very blue. Very red and very white Hey, baby, it's very blue Very red and very white We're not what can one expect when the whole society Honors the man who are the best damn thieves Mr. John D. J. P. and Carnegie Got themselves on buildings and on libraries where you screw over me, Bob. I screw you. Fucking all the people's American ads. Red, white, and blue. It's very blue. Very red and very white. Very blue. Very red and blue. One card that I play. Murder is a part of the game. Power is a drug that I crave. You better get me before I get you. Killing is American, is red, white, and blue. It's very blue. Very red, very red, very white. Tonight, very blue. Very red and very white. Yes, 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 it's very blue. Very red and very
I want to do a song, Bob. That Larry, there's somebody on the on the phone who insists that you're really somebody else under a, a nom de plume. Oh, oh, and who? Who? I want to know who the nom de plume is. Yeah, what is this? What is this stuff? <laughs> you're on the air. Oh, okay. No, I don't insist that at all. I'm just saying that uh, you know, there's a whole <clears throat> dichotomy or a syndrome that has grown up uh, in education, in uh, uh, communications, and what have you. That says you will believe what a radio announcer says. You will believe what a television announcer says. You will believe what a school teacher says. You will believe what. Uh, a politician says, or a governmental that's, official, that's or Ron true. Ziegler, or what have you. Yeah, that's true. And with faith uh, in, in that, so many right. of these people completely destroyed. Uh -huh. Hey, he's telling the truth, though, man. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying he isn't, but I am saying that uh, this sort of thing, you know, I, I, in, in a way it kind of points yeah, out uh, uh, maybe the difficulty of that uh, a lot of people are having in, well, in a why lot are you, of areas now. Why are you in, being so coy? Who do you think it is? Well, I mean, Hallie sounds kind of like Dylan, you know, and... Uh, oh, is that Dylan? Hey, man, I mean, Dylan? he has, you know, he, he seems to, to, to do intelligent enough uh, lyrics and that sort of thing. Well, I, I appreciate but, that, uh, you know, uh, that, that those uh, similarities, you know, whatever you're picking up is like uh, not necessarily to my, it's to my, more often to my detriment than not. That's just the way it goes. Well, I, I, nevertheless, the quality is there. And, uh, you know, this, this, this is not meant to, uh, I, I'm not trying to cause any reflection or anything like that. I'm just saying that uh, uh, more and more this is becoming a, a situation that people are facing everywhere. You know, what to believe and what not to believe. Well, that's, the more you know, the more you, less you believe, I suppose. I, I suppose that's true. I suppose you know, that's true. But obviously any, there any, has to come a point when you say, uh, all right, enough is enough. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop looking uh, for spooks behind every bush well, or, or whatever yeah. and uh, believe everything. I mean, you can't do that, but uh, more well, and more I, I think uh, people may start to do that. And I'm afraid that uh, uh, the whole Jerry Ford thing is going to be that way. People are going to, to do this uh, simply because it takes... Uh, I suppose it's terribly taxing to be incredulous all the time. Does that make any sense? Uh, yeah, but you know, I, I think that you know it's true that that um, a pattern of belief w has been set up over time, and and the la the last period has exploded a lot of uh, the myths which enable the system to run, which is why they got Jerry Ford there right now. You know, trying to uh, reestablish some faith in what they say, which very few people believe at this point. Well, I, I, I'm not so sure, especially in the case of politicians, that there is any reason to have faith. I mean, I think it's because of people well, like... I certainly wasn't suggesting that one should have faith. I, I think that, that, that what you're talking about is that more and more people don't believe, and, and on the other hand, you know, that's, that's, that's good. That's just fine, because why should they, you know, believe those lies? I think that's good, but in other words, what I, I think the point I'm trying to make, and I'm not really so clear of it in my own mind, is that after a while, uh, maybe there's some mechanism in the human mind uh, 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 that constitutes a saturation point. Are you saying you've reached a saturation point or what? I'm not saying that I have necessarily. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. I have. I don't know. Uh, but in other words, when uh, hey, it becomes... Are you, that, excuse uh, me, you know, for the last several excuse me, years, excuse uh, me, wait a minute, are you, are you, wait a minute, excuse me, I, I just got to ask you something, I don't mean to be rude and interrupt, but are you, are you Bob Dylan? Am I what? Bob Dylan? No. <laughs> wait a minute, the way you said no there, I, I, I see, get the voice prints out. <laughs> I mean, that's a very good point, you know, I mean, anybody could be, or at least could call up, and uh, I'm sure there's probably somebody else with that name anyway. In fact, there are probably several people running around with that name, or anybody could adopt that name. But uh, uh, <clears throat> basically, what, what, what I'm trying to say is that uh, given the choice of believing other people... What are you talking about? No, that's about, no good. Man. Strike that. What are you uh, talking about? Wait a well, I, got, I, I mean, I, so I think, you, you know... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've struck a chord of some sort. <laughs>
somebody else there. those phones ringing. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, all I can say is I didn't know that. So. <laughs> okay, well, you can... <laughs> oh, well. Uh, about was trying to get things together in a somewhat... It sounded like in a different way than has been done generally, and uh, he was removed from the... Uh, I mean, I don't exactly know what he was trying to do, but trying to get people together without riots breaking out, because mostly, since there wasn't really a, enough people who were going to support them outside, that they just ended up getting killed. And uh, But nevertheless, his approach didn't seem to be liked by the authorities any better, and they sent him to a place which he um, describes as the death house. And uh, I took part of that and made it into this song uh, in, in F sharp. Uh, so this one is a little louder in spots. So I don't know how we'll manage that, but I'll warn you in advance. Ah, okay. I am uh, on wheels even. I can uh, coast in and out. This is the last stop to end all the line. Death house, bad for a good heart, makes those who can't see blind. We keep on getting crazy all the time in the death house. There's no way to go and nothing to do. The meaningless time here, time that does not pass or move. Meaningless motion is ruthless time. Time of no moment, time of no time. Time of nothing human here. Time that is not yours or oh mine. But time that you must do, time that you must serve here. Indefinitely, indefinitely, consecutively here. Where are you and time and everyone? And everything comes to nothing Cause nothing means nothing here Death, suffering death of the way of life And it occurs over and over again Without end here No life, no love, no existence, just unjust time. Time and no existence here on this is the last stop. It's the end of the line. This house, this house, the world ending, fire and ice of never ending pain. Madness and maims, cripples and murders all in it here And the walls aren't getting any softer Here that's clear Cause this is the last stop It's the end of the land, yes you know. The death house, death house End of the land, this is the last stop, yes
got a call from someone who I know you're going to love talking to. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Well, all right. You're on the radio. I am? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to finish off about what I said about Nixon. Right. Now, Nixon, I feel, is the best president right now in this, in this era, you could call it. I mean, because, you know... Like, the best ex-president. Ex-president. But I, th right. I still think that this, um, this resignment was a lot of garbage, and a lot of people are... And he's the best that. garbage, too. Not who, but I, I mean, you know, a lot of people are feeling sorry for themselves, are feeling sorry for Nixon, because, you know, it's a really bad thing. It's history. You know, even if it seems Sometimes like, I feel sorry for history. It, it sounds like it's just, you know, like 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 something that happened, but it's, it's history. I mean, you know, like, it, it's going to make... I mean, you know, it's a major thing that happened, you know what I mean? Yeah. And And so... And so I feel that Nixon should still be on, should still be in office. How's that? For what reason, man? I mean, besides so that he could be impeached. You know, because I think it's really very well, unfair I, to the American public and to everybody else that's been slammed in jail and screwed over that he shouldn't be impeached, man. He deserved, man, the maximum that they could bring on him, man. Yeah, but you don't, you see, there's two, there's either... There's two things that are happening. They're, they're the guys that want to get Nixon sent away, that want to get him out of office, because they're nothing. I mean, they, they can't do anything for themselves except impeach Nixon. And they're, they're the people that are clogging up the United States. Well, well wait a minute. The, you know, the, the, you mean the mo most of the politicians? Not Is most of the politicians that are anti-Nixon. Well, you know, that's true. And what do you but mean what by is that? clogging up? What it's causing up are, did you the, notice, like, the Watergate tapes, you know? Like, there was a lot of, like, you know, no one talked for five minutes and stuff like that. But they haven't brought anything against Nixon, which is real proof. Oh, wait a minute now. Uh, I mean, you, you probably, you're a student of, of how the about, government. How about him admitting that he lied? Now, how about that, in his own words? I admit, I admit that it's, har it's hard to believe him even when he said that he lied. <laughs> wait, wait. Could, <laughs> but, That's back to the last guy. Wait. That proved it to me pretty conclusively. Wait a minute. You watched the impeachment hearings probably, right? No, probably not. Did you watch the impeachment hearings? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you saw Charles Wiggins agonizing, right? No. You didn't see him agonizing? No, I didn't see him. Oh, no. I thought Nixon was talking and he was breaking up. I mean, Char well, those, Charles those Wiggins was Charles Wiggins watched, was dummy. was agonizing was agonizing over, over all of these things, and and every time Ruckles ha no, Ruckles no, House, no, who he, was no. not Ruckles House, that guy next to him, you know, every time he voted against Nixon, you could see him going, oh, that young man, he doesn't know what he's doing, and and blah blah. And a week what later, he he listens. That? What? What could Nixon do about that? I mean, either way, even if he, if he admitted he lied about something. Or if you try, if Wait a minute, I hear you, but do you hear me? This guy, Charles Wiggins, who was masterminding Nixon's defense in the committee, the next week came out and said, this guy has to be impeached. Now, how do you reconcile that with your uh, clean bill of health theory? I think that Nixon and, that, and, and whatever, Wiggins, had a disagreement. They had a disagreement? Yeah. You mean they were playing, they were playing poker and Nixon... Uh, Beat him for a, what is the story? I mean, yeah. tell me, you you say that you saw the impeachment hearings. Excuse me, oh, just listen. Can you, me? can you hear me? Well, that's. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, it's debatable. But. I have only one thing to say. <laughs> you, you you um thank you. You said that you saw the impeachment hearings. Could you just describe the general shape? I let him speak his piece. You know. He's, let him speak his war. Well, he's been speaking his war for quite a while. He can say something from his mouth and not from the horn. Wait a minute now. Look, everybody speaks the way they do, you know. That's that's the greatness of... Uh, if you think that I'm speaking, you know, stupidly, why don't you tell me instead of... I didn't say you were... I, I said okay. that I don't think that, you know, I'm this glad goes you on. And, that, but, you know, I but, uh, but uh, you know... Uh, no, I think that you're the only problem. You're not stupid. It's just that you pretend to know stuff, and you don't know nothing. All right, all but right. you're not stupid. Is, right, you're very good at talking about what you don't, you know, know and 
fool, you f you're fooling yourself completely. Else? I mean, you know, I was just trying to bring up a conversation. Well, look, let's uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about historical perspective a little bit, since you seem to be interested in that. I mean, it's definitely true that they didn't nail Richard Nixon for 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 really what he did. I mean, you know, uh, those things that he did were, were they were relatively minor in the scale of things. I think, you know, of course, if he had Watergate hadn't blown, well, one knows not doesn't know exactly how it would have gone. But I mean. You know, the bombing of Cambodia was a fairly significant little item which went under the table. The Christmas bombing of Vietnam, which was the most bloodthirsty and horrendous act, you know, one of, one of the crimes of the century, aside from all the other bombings, you know, th that was completely gratuitous, which has become clear that the whole the whole pattern of the way things. So those are all impeachable offenses, too. I mean, the war crimes, of, his war crimes are impeachable offenses, too. And on that scale, of course, you could have impeached, you know, Johnson should have been impeached, too, and Kennedy as well, but that's not the way it went. I mean, un unfortunately, he tripped over his shoelaces, and, and right. that became a public thing, so he took the brunt of certain kind of... Uh, Speaking about Kennedy, no. you know that? Now, I happen to think that he was one of the... Except for Franklin Delano Roosevelt, I happen to think that Kennedy was one of the best presidents that I've known about. Now, how do you feel about that? Did, you, did I didn't hear you? Excuse me, I didn't. I I, no, no, you could say it over again. I still won't hear you. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why you called me. Uh, there must be some show that doesn't answer the telephone where you could really make a good impression. Um, uh, do you have any final words? Anything that you'd like to say? Because uh, I see, I get the, I really get the feeling that none of this. Yeah, you're still in the air. None of this stuff. I don't hear myself. Well, I think that was your real intention hey, do in you calling. Feel, do you feel yourself? I mean, what's happening? No, I don't. Because you know, you guys are just pulling the bullshit. Are you? Well, you can't say that word on the radio. I you know. I wouldn't say that. I haven't said one curse word. What would you? I realize I haven't heard myself, and you guys are just trying to play a game. Are you really Bob Dylan putting us on? I'm not Bob Dylan putting you on. Who are you trying to imitate anyway? Bob Fa he's trying to imitate Bob Fast. Some people say he does it very well, other people. Hey, it's just an imitation. Hey man, let's play some music. Okay. Hey man, you know, you know, why don't you eat yourself out? Oh, okay. Out to lunch. Yeah. Out to lunch. <laughs> This hour, I don't know. It's well. It's, uh, hmm. I ain't good fault. You're on the air. <laughs> I've been waiting for so long, man. Oh, oh you want? You're the fellow that called before. I said you wanted to talk on the air. Yeah. About oh. some community work. Nah, forget that. <laughs> I want to talk about that nut who just called here. That's a poor fish. <laughs> He didn't know the uh, Watergate hands from uh, Nixon, uh, what was it, his farewell speech to the, his cabinet it was? Yeah, right, to his, his staff. Yeah, that, that's what he was talking about. I think that guy was in a trance or something. Hey, Larry. Yeah. You can play the guitar pretty good, man. Oh. Uh, I, w I work at it sometimes. <laughs> can you play a little Jimi Hendrix? Um... No, I wouldn't say that I could. Sometimes when I'm really wrecked, I uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that I'm playing. Can you you don't know how to play a little bit? Just a little. That's all. Just a little taste. No, I, I can't. I mean, that's you know that his music uh, stands pretty well. I, have you I listen heard, to it though. Have you heard it ever? Have you ever heard of this guy named Ernest Isley? Yeah, brother, I know who that is. You think he can play like Jimmy? No, he plays like Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say Jimmy taught him before. No, but I mean, he's his own guitar player, man, because Hendrix and Ernie Isley are so far away from each other, man, it's incredible, you know. But I think Ernest trying to get like Jimmy. I, I, I disagree, man. I think Ernest is trying to get more like Ernest, and I think he's doing a good job of it, too. Yeah, he is doing a good job. Who's that harmonica playing? That's me talking to, Sugar. Oh, <laughs> play pretty good. Thank you. Mm. I work at it now, I guess, myself. <laughs> work at a lot of things, huh? Uh, hey, 
Did you notice that chick that come on Wednesday night named Pepsi? Pepsi? Pe <laughs> Are you kidding me, man? Where Where does she come on? She comes on WBI no, on Wednesday know. night. I don't know. You know, I get to listen to it sometimes. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I took some no-dos and I can't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's one that'll keep you up a little longer, maybe. That, that fella uh, who called before must have uh, been a need. You took all the no-dos that he should have had. He is asleep. <laughs> Hello? You. Uh, yeah, yes. You said you wanted to say something about some community project. Community are you from? Oh, um, I don't know. This one. This electronic community. You mean where do I live? Yeah. I live in uh, Chelsea, or like just outside of Chelsea. Oh, I'm, hey, man, I'm from New Jersey, man. Way over on the other side somewhere. You mean outside of New York City? That's it. And where I live, you can't walk the streets without a pistol. People Move, man. <laughs> Quick, move. <laughs> out of your mind. Hey, man, if, you, if they catch you with a pistol, man, you know, they they gonna put you in jail, and if you ain't got one... They gonna, gonna put you in jail, they gonna take you up on John Street and whoop your head. Everybody, everybody can't walk without a pistol or just the police? No, the police, they better keep a pistol. <laughs> I mean, downtown, you pull a raid, I mean, these guys, like, they killed a couple of cops. They broke one cop back, took the other cop's gun, Put the handcuff, handcuffs on one guy, he broke him. Like, cops just ran out of the court. I can lock up about 16 guys, my father. A whole lot of people, man. Like in the 60s, this used to be a tough neighborhood, Jack. It used to be a riot every weekend. But things have calmed down now. Yeah, they calmed down. Like, let me see about. <laughs> I said about four months ago, this guy, Ravnell, broke out of prison. Yeah. Well, this hell was way back sometime. Last year, I think. Ravnell broke out of prison. So he was he lived around the corner here on South Park Street, man. This guy came downtown, cut off this man's head. Oh, man. Over some dope, I think it was. I don't know. For sure. This guy was a maniac, man. I'm hip. He had to be, man. You hit him. They shot him, let me see. No, don't tell me, man, I'll get sick. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Pennsylvania somewhere, Philadelphia, I think it was. And he was hiding away, and they said the cops shot it out with him. But I don't think it went that way. I think the cops broke in and shot it up by themselves. You know, because cops hold a one-sided story sometimes. You ever have any problems with the cops? Yeah, man. But that was in Georgia a long time ago, man. It, chain gang and stuff. But I don't deal with that kind of stuff no more. I try to keep away from it. I got a uh, couple of cops stop me just about every three weeks. Give me a thorough investigation, search down and stuff. One night I was carrying some paper on me. Took me up to the precinct and stuff. I thought they were going to keep me up there for a while. They get you a lot of trouble, man. Like me and myself, me and cops don't get along too cool. It's not that I'm a troublemaker. It's just that I like to go my own way. Uh -huh. Be bothered by the cops. Everywhere you turn around, it's just blue suit and badge. Blue suit and badge. How you feel about cops? Unfortunately, man, you, they have to be, they have to be around, man, because yeah, there are a bunch of people, man, that definitely, you know, they think it's pretty cool to stand on the corner and rip everybody off that comes down, you know. I mean, they're necessary. They, they're definitely a necessary evil, man. It's, I mean, what can you do? Like, I'm black. Uh, well, I can dig it. Me too. You know, don't feel by yourself. That's cool. <laughs> you know. So, like, it's this section in... Well, I live called Peter's Town, where all the Tangles is at. Uh, around 4th of July, they had a ride out there. They said everything was cool until the cops turned up. Started um, insinuating the Italians and stuff, calling them names and stuff. So I broke out there. 
They injured about 13 cops. Cops put about four guys in the hospital. They arrested 26. Girls got sprayed in the face with mace and stuff, man. Sounds like a good party. It was. <laughs> so the Italians got all hot about that. And they kept on arguing for over about four weeks or so. And the mayor promised a full investigation. So it's dropped now, man. I don't understand the world, man. I mean, you know, I, I can't understand how come people can't groove together, man. You got to get beyond your color and stuff, you know. You got to get beyond where you grew up at, man, to to who you are, man. And that's, you know, people that deal with things all according to, you know, the kind of clothes you wear or the color you are or, you know, hey, you just... You know, you just ease by them, man, because they don't mean nothing, man. They don't mean nobody no good. They got their own hang-ups and leave them hung up right in their racial prejudice or whatever bag that they're in that's negative, leave them right there. That's right. Like, it's some Puerto Ricans walk around with what's happening to me and stuff, so I just go along with the program. It's cool, you know? I feel like, let me see, Puerto Ricans, Cubans... Somebody said it was partly black. I'm not sure. But it's all the same to me. Don't bother me about that kind of stuff, you see? I'm like a one-man person. I like to go out by myself. Just stay there with a stereo or something. I can't be cooped around the whole family. Right now, my mother and father, they're in Washington, D.C. They went away for three days. They'll be back tomorrow. Oh, God. What am I do? Get back together with them. What else? <laughs> yeah, six feet tall. No, he's six four. He used to be a boxer. I guess I told my mother is five four. No, she's five three. Five three. I got two little sisters. I can't get along with sisters. Jackson in between us. You have your sisters? And I, you know, well, nah, well, hey, let me think about that. I don't know what my daddy been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he been doing. I might have some out there somewhere. He been working in the United Nations, huh? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Hey, man, nice rapping on you, brother. I got nothing to do, man. I don't feel like sitting here because I don't want to look at TV. Call your lady, man. I got a song. My lady in a bed, sleep. This is sort of a little bit related. Somebody else, bro. I know. We're going to play a tune for you. Sit back and listen to the box. Well, why, could I call back later and talk? It's cool with me. I don't know. You know why not? Off the streets now. You think 
you've got some bright ideas We'll run things the way we want them And you did a night and talk here You'd better get that clear You'd better get it clear We record all your conversation And your global talking revolution and unrest We'll warn you before half you ten I guess you didn't think that I was quite serious Oh, why do you have to go causing problems? Man, we'll put you in a hole In what will happen to you It is very hard to tell Some boys seem to get real crazy It's something to be seen We will try to keep them quiet With a little bit of poison So if you go on cutting those pablons Man, you never can tell but one of these days Just my child will escape like George Jackson, yes, and he'll blow you right away. I'll be waiting to put a bullet in your brain, and I'll try to get away. And a letter of commendation, some kind of governor's declaration.
Well, I woke up this morning Looked outside my window And all the sounds seemed to say snow I put on my boots and my head on my coat And I sit off down the road I find my way to the train Trying to kiss the move and slow Find my way to the train I ride it on till I get off Well the train is off the crowded yes it is There are people everywhere The first person I recognized was an old barmaid friend of mine And there a lot of men back from Vietnam A lot of black people and a lot of Puerto Ricans Oh my God, all my old housemates were there And they were riding on the train Trying to keep the moving slow I Keep on riding on the train You see the riding on to the get off yeah. Where well, the conductor he nodded He pointed his seat right out He looked so much like an angel of death I began to shout with her this train Well, I looked at the conductor of this train Look at the conductor of the train Who is driving it, baby? I surely would like to know Son 
sun began to fade. You got to raise them up, raise them up, raise them up, raise them up, you the guilt say. From 150 miles away. himself it was the other day Yeah, I wish you would. You wish we would cool out? No, do the thumb piano. Oh, just a second. Ooh. Let me see if I can get, get in. Because uh, I have a la the only label that I have up here on any of these microphone uh, controls is a little piece of scotch tape that says thumb piano. <laughs> it isn't really scotch tape. says thumb piano. to do right and you get your fingers together on it and, and it takes you where it wants to go I, I really get off on it you know it's like just a toy I've only been playing it for a couple of months you know but I really dig it how, how is it tuned it's t it's tuned diatonically right it's got a it's got I don't know how to run it down but it's like a from B to G and from G to G and then from G to D you know, however that's tuned, all you musically minded people out there, you know, I just play the game. You know? well, let me see what we're going to come up with.
It's easy ballad. It's one E minor. That was really wonderful. Really wonderful. I was. Uh, uh, he wrote 16 new verses for the song. To Out of the bottom, the babble of the telephone along the coastal range of the Staten Island Hills. The highest point between Maine and Key West in the southern waters of an American path. The chill of death house racing up the spine. The battered bones of the impoverished and lonely, broken and scattered aimlessly among the seas at the hands of a Yankee superstar, red, white, and Bobby Black Soul Blues. This was the myth and promise of a legendary America when Where Were You in 62? was christened the best years of our lives by the last picture show, born on the backs of the dead and crippled of Vietnam and Korea before them, the silence of their words screaming out in irony, the terrible uselessness of their fate in the streets of sweltering New York City, the Guadalupe bars, the French port crap game southeast of the French Quarter, the Modoc County or Appalachian shacks, the East Los Angeles heat, the crumbling hotel sheltering the elderly of Miami Beach, the very residue of Watergate bred in the kernel of the 1774 revolution. We are their inheritance, Larry. We are the colonialists of the 1970s, and our charge, along with the rest of the globe, is simply the harvest and planting of the earth, the sea, and the sky, the passing of the solstice and equinox at the cusp of Indian summer, when the warm October, a brilliant, a brilliant western sunset gives hint of the melting April waters to cleanse and renew our battered bodies from the recently deceased season of winter. Brave, frightened children of Esterlidge, we are not alone. Your music sounds great. And keep it up. Well, uh, thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, uh, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what to say. Maybe you could leave Bob your number after you get off the air. Yeah, okay. Uh, There's somebody else on the yeah. phone, too. Hello. Yeah, I'm still here. Hi. I caught you about four weeks ago on this show, and I got up at four in the morning for some reason, and it's a good thing to do this turn on Bob Fast, see what's going on. And what's going on was you were just finishing a song called The Main Line. Uh-huh. So I wrote him a note that got to you, Larry, who sent me a record. Right. And I, so, and I liked the record and I liked the song, so I thought I'd call up and ask for it, if you wouldn't mind singing it, because I really dug it. Okay, sure. Um, okay. I really sure. appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Now, between those two OK, you wonder what happened between those two OKs that Larry had just uttered? He wrote 16 new verses for the song to bring it up to date. Yeah, right. You know, he certainly doesn't stay very far behind the news. Speaking of behind the news, this is WBAI in New York City, where the news is behind. Well, uh, I want to play this one song, which is... Uh, sort of a ballad, and then two songs have just been suggested to me, so uh, I'll, I'll do those two. Uh, well, and, uh, yeah, let's, uh, this is a, the ballad of Bo Van Nam. Some, some, I'm a, you know, I, I, in all the hearings and everything, uh, they kept referring to the war that was over, you know, in Vietnam. Yes, we remember that. And, uh, well, we we know it, it's going on, and uh, so that suggests another song to me as well. But uh, let me just start with this one because it's one, a few sides of it, for those who had any illusions at all about what it was about. 
Lo Van Nam was, well, he's a bunch of things. Um, ultimately, a peddler in Saigon. So, you know, yeah. Senators and the congressmen, they have voted on another bill to send billions of dollars to Vietnam. Hear one story, if you will. The name of Vietnamese man, he was born and raised in the South. He tilled his land, turned the water wheels by hand. He couldn't afford to keep an ox with the little he got. The land was rich, the rice yield was high, but most of it had gold to the landlord in rent, which he quickly spent at the Riviera, or in Paris, or in Saigon, with his taste so French and his new habits so American. Viet Cong cadre moved into his village They didn't steal his chickens, didn't rape and didn't pillage Which is what Saigon soldiers did collecting rent The communists said don't pay and we'll try to protect you Vo Van Nam was a family man, he had three children, he was trying to keep fed didn't care much for politics, he didn't give a damn, but he understood hunger, you can understand, so he stayed living there, cause the communists acted like they were his friends. <laughs> Nam and others, they kept farming rice, they gave some to the communists to keep them alive. The American strategists were very destroyed. They had to get the guerrillas from their support. The Harvard professor, he came up with a plan. He sent bombs like rain to cover the land. Without pause, without pity, the peasants will pack up, they'll move to the city. There'll be a pool for the draft. Lay the hands for the factories And so the generals bowed to his deep understanding and simplicity Cause we were ready to try anything Couldn't stay in the bowling, so with his family moved on. They built a shack out of garbage in the alleyways of Saigon. He was drafted into the army. His children now were five on the fifteen dollar a month's pay they couldn't get by. But his wife walked the street. Selling lottery tickets And when free from the army He took all they had He bought a foot pedal cab Which he pedaled like mad Night and day Against inflation Which sucked his work up like a sponge And when strong enough He'd go down to the hospital And pedal his blood One day after selling his bloody found that his foot pedal cab wasn't nowhere around. 
He searched through the city for almost a week Broken and crazy, desperate and beat And he pawned his watch He pocketed the money And he gathered up his children and he took them to the movies And after the picture He took them to a church He told them to wait there That soon he'd return He bought a box of matches and some gasoline in a plastic bag In a blazing song of one man's despair Whose life was tortured and death cut the air Oh, forget if you can the litanies Of honor and of peace Of boredom and of apathy Of privilege and of ease Your national chauvinisms Your usual as business hymns To security in prisons A many condemns all I see To the plague from which there must be relief Short of death Fuck it if you can the litanies Of honor and of peace Of boredom and of apathy Of privilege and of ease Your national chauvinisms The usual as business hymns To security in prisons or merely condemns all I see to a plague from which there must be relief short of death. This is not in. Uh, this has nothing to do with the song we just did, Mark. But I was thinking that if uh, Sugar Blue wanted to come up here sometime and just play thumb piano all night long, it would be wonderful. Uh, you've you've been here lots of times, and it's been wonderful too. Mark, but that would be. Uh, you've only been doing that for five weeks? Well, something else. It really sounds good. It's, uh, I, I've, heard the, I've heard it played, you know, before, and I know, you know, a little bit about it. But, uh, I, I mean, I never, I never heard it played quite like that. Well, maybe you'd uh, like to play some more to uh, set the mood for it in the main line. If I can... Let me just get in tune so I don't have to break the spell tuning.
and you lay stretched on the stone floor. The lambs are at bay. He's hurt at the gold and he can't drive the guards no more. And it'll be another hungry day on the mainland. And his life is derailed. He's on the main line. He cannot escape from that jail. And Mary, she is so empty. Now that it's all come to pass. The scene of snow white days quickly fade. That curtain falls at last, and she's on the main line. In a life it is derailed. She's on the main line. She can't escape from the nail. Yeah, the new Cleopatra, they are just hanging out the bio pier. Every day they watch the ships come in, the ocean gathers their tears on the mainland. Lovers fail on the main. You can only think about yourself there. Now her sage said to me one day, you'll see what they have done. They'll drive you away, they'll make you insane. You think they've lost, but they've won. You're the mainland.
You're on the air. Hello, Bob. Yeah. Um, two things. Larry? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Is Larry there? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, I can hear you on the radio, but not on the phone. So I guess that's okay, too. Um, I was wondering... A couple, one thing, one earlier caller made a point that... Well, you should get a rebate on this call. Can you hear me? Just barely. All that noise. Can you turn me up or anything? Because I can hear you over the air, but barely over the phone. And this is the third time I've tried to call, too. Well, go ahead. Okay, yeah. I'll try. One earlier caller, Larry, made a point um, when he... The guy that thought you were Dylan... Yeah. For a minute, he had me worried. I was afraid he had blown the whole number. I better explain that a little bit. You see, uh, Larry used to use another name because, it, well, the reason he's entertaining in the first place is that this is about the only way he can uh, get his real feelings across. The name he used to use, he used his real first name, and his last name was supposed to indicate the attitude he had to take to to uh, satisfy his con his Grand Rapids constituency. But some of his advisors thought that Jerry Ostrich was just a little too close, so they had him change it a little further from his real name. And the second, another, another caller was kind what? of upset with recent events. In what his was that? I'm sorry, I missed that. It went, went by me. Oh. Yeah, it got lost in the ticks. Could you understand the words? Not really, I guess. I, I thought you were trying to say something, but I didn't get what it was. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. I don't know if it's going to bear reputation or not. I said that um, the name you used to use was your real first name. But no, I, I heard the words, but what does that mean? The point of the joke was that, uh, that Larry Etheridge is a uh, pseudonym, and your real name is Jerry Ford. Oh, I get it. Jerry Ostrich. Now, do you get it? Is, is the uh, attitude that you had to take for your constituents? Uh -huh. The joke did not bear explanation. I think uh -huh. it was reasonably witty if it, if you picked it up, but oh well. Well, Sorry I don't that. never claim to have a wit, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not, not at... Uh, Play that on your kalimba. 2.25 in the morning, anyhow. Uh, I came across... This is pure coincidence. I was reading something tonight that I thought might be of interest to another caller who seems rather dissatisfied with recent historical events. I've been reading The Golden Bough by uh, Sir James Frazier, which is, stu is a study of the evolution of the practice of magic. And I came across this that I think might be important to him. You're not going to suggest that we roast and eat Nixon, are you? It's a thought. Just barely, though. Hello. A charm by which a banished prince might be restored Hello. to his kingdom. Hello. He had to eat food cooked on a tree, and or coo, cooked on a coo, fire, coo, which, was, which was set with wood, which had grown out of the stump of a tree which had been cut down. And, you know, just in case you can think of anybody that that might apply to. George Washington. Yeah, right. He, I'm sure he wanted to go back as a loyal subject to Britain. Uh, are you serious? No, and, and I don't mean to be facetious either, but wow, man! I mean, like I'm, I'm like I've been hip to BAI for years, you know, and like I've listened to, and I never did believe the callers, man. Some at times, you know, I mean, because it come from so far out of left field. Like, what did that have to do with anything? I, I, it, it, the whole thing went past me. As a matter of fact, the last three callers went completely by me. I'm sorry, that was, it, it just happened to be a weird coincidence that I read that very, very, very old magic spell just as the guy was complaining that a terrible injustice had been done, done to Nixon, and I was hoping maybe it would comfort him. Maybe he can write to Nixon and suggest he try it. Who cares? <laughs> I was being sarcastic, too. I hope you picked that up. Uh, no, I'm, it went by me, man. I really, I can't. Uh, guys, uh, whatever. It's all been a flight of fancy on my part. <laughs> Thank you, fancy. Okay. I, I hope I've tickled your fancy. <laughs> your fancy what? Oh. oh, it's been strange. Oh, right. Yeah, I can keep making music, and that kalimba really sounds fine. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. It, it was just hard. There were all those clicks on the phone. I think that's what it was.
This one's in G, this is also a word.
Tell me to keep this troubled watch and to cry out in the night. Help me to see this storm with love and to nurture it until it's right. We'll be unwearied minstrels. And we'll always find a song We are destined to be restless sailors Who always never are home Help me to try and to make some sense Confusion reigns. Maybe some of our songs will echo on a little while. I the sing. I know we can't be satisfied. We strive not to be bright. Oh, like those ragged prophets. On the line who prophesied through wine The time to notice all the beauty that perhaps inspire. Let us walk this traveled road, pause beside in light of fire. Let our eyes focus on that which is generally missed. And let our open gaze greet one follow by a kiss. Help me to keep a touch that is gentle. And it step to the straight ahead Help me to carry those I've lost But let's turn away from home the dead yeah, Help me to maintain a belief that's firm In people and in life We're too wise not to judge, but let us love and love 
Yes, if when wise Help me lend my spirit To the infinite musical sculpture And let us be joy connectors, prison rejectors, rain makers, hell raisers, and vision projectors. I'm happy to refuse the emptiness and the guilt with an open hand. You be my islander, I'll be a pusher and bender. We talk straight, man, we go on his hands. friend just walked in. And uh, Larry and Sugar Blue just uh, slapped the flesh. They, uh, they made that together with their hands. That, I mean, that worked pretty good. <laughs> and uh, Steve Brennan's friend just walked in with Vermont dirt still on his shoe. Green mountains in his eyes. A cup of coffee in his hand. Hey, Sit down. Yeah, mm -hmm. a cup of coffee. <laughs> Happy's, Happy's on coffee, man. Didn't they bring you coffee before? No. Man. How could that be? Somebody went out and got coffee and they oh, didn't wow. bring it on? Sure could have dug some, too. Mm. Steve was in coffee. And I've been sitting here drinking my coffee, thinking, oh, well, they're waiting until they... <laughs> Get finished playing before they have their coffee. How dedicated. Do you want to play something or sit down and whatever? Yeah, let's sit down and rap for a while, man. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about Whatever or play. Know, this is, yeah. Okay, I mean whatever. This is here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that is a sound of coffee. Okay. Mr. Sugar Blue is unwrapping his coffee. You probably hear it. It's in the key of G. You've been out of the country? I haven't been out in the country. Oh, oh. And, um... Oh, that was a funny way to talk about Vermont. Yeah? Yeah. That may be right. Well, uh, it's 200,000 people in the whole state, you know? And, uh... And I guess half the people live in, in trailer trailer parks, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, when people lose a job and they go to the next job and take the whole house. And you always see people moving their houses. And uh, it's incredible, like every eighth car or seventh car is like somebody with their house. And it's something really sophisticated, like, you know, people go up a Harley Davidson bike. And people have done some fantastic things with their houses. It's a strange thing. It's like, it's like being, um, what's those people roam the desert? Nomads. Yeah, nomads, right. <laughs> And uh, there's a lot of people like just uh, in those trailers. And uh, but where I am is like a you know, feeling in the country. And uh, it took me about five minutes to, to adjust. And it's you know it's it's so. And every time you go out in the country, you say, you know, you, it's that thing you keep hearing. There's no more room. 
you know, every place, you know, there's so much, you know, I, I don't want to get into that complicated ecological, uh, you know, who's right and what's the exact figures. I don't get into that number, but there's a lot of room out there and, uh, I don't know. But you, you know something? I, I, I saw Luke today, he just came back from, from Morocco. You know what he was doing? He was planting soybean. He brought soybean to Morocco. Never, there's never been any soybean in Morocco. And he, he there's this new f uh, Japanese soybean, and he picked up 25,000 plants, and he went to this town where there's a group of farmers, and he showed me all these photographs today about him and the farmers planting the soybean crop, the first Moroccan soybean crop, 25,000 plants. And he's got a, a photograph of, uh, of like a young Arab dude translating it from French to Arabic for his father, who's a farmer, you know? That was really uh, interesting. I saw, saw those pictures today. But uh, know, the country is really... Phew. There's some good music here. I've been listening uh, downtown. Some good music here. I, 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 got, I was going to come up here earlier, but I, the music just kept me uh, sitting there waiting. Yeah, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine who just came back from Iowa. She said that, well, I guess a week ago, someone called to my, a friend of mine, the mayor called to my attention that they were praying for rain in Iowa. And uh, she said it's incredible out there. That um, just in terms of planning, that that the drought is really heavy, and that it, between thirty and seventy percent of the corn crop has been pretty much destroyed by lack of rain, and uh, that they're getting ready to uh, fortunes gonna, have been made on the commodities exchange. Though. That they're thinking about planting winter wheat now, and that the ground is so hard in places that the machines are breaking. And people are uh, very uh, freaked out. They see uh, another dust bowl coming. And everybody's busy canning. <laughs> canning things to uh, get ready. And they're, re they're re really afraid of a lot of farm foreclosures. You know, the banks move in and then it t will own Iowa, too. And uh, it's really weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. all, all the farms are being bought up by big multinationals. All the chicken farms already have. There's no more independent chicken farms, and uh, a lot of the farms have been bought up by multinationals. But Vermont, you got small farms, you know, and uh, people trade uh, trade vegetables and milk. And uh, can they make a living doing that? I mean, can they, you know, keep themselves alive and you know, functioning? No, people, people that I find up there, they, they do a little bit of everything, you know, like in the, the garden in our house. You know, we get cabbage and lettuce and. Uh, and a couple of the vegetables out of the ground that, you know, only feed a certain amount of people per week, you know. But uh, there's, everybody does a little bit of everything up there, you know, and that's what they found up there. It's been a tradition up there. People do a couple of things and to keep it together. You know, it, it, uh, I don't know. Every, time I go, every time I go out out of the city and I see all the land and I come back and I see everybody pushed together here, you know, because that's where the jobs are. There's only a small percentage of us can go out to the farm, go out to the country and, be, and begin to develop whatever that's all about. And we've seen the last couple of years, people who went out to the farm, uh, not, some people knew what they were going to do, some people didn't. And after a couple of years, some people found out because they had to and they experimented. But Vermont's got a, a particularly good scene in terms of uh, experimentation of people on the farm and political consciousness as well. I mean. There's like a whole, you know, there's, there's a, a radical, a radical, you know, farm movement there. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's unique. I don't know. I haven't seen the rest of the country lately. But there's a lot of people there who've, who've gone to the city and who come from the city and, and ended up on the farm and, and the small towns and have gotten it together with the people there. It's very different. Uh, I don't know. I never saw a farm until... Well, I had to get in. The, I had to go into the army to see a farm. Man. They sent me to Georgia, man. And I saw a farm. It freaked me out. I fell in love with the country. As a matter of fact, man, I was born here, but I'm a Georgia boy at heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Blue, could you use that other microphone? This, uh, this one. We're rehearsing this play out there, you know, right out there in the land, and it's got, you know, it's got a big wooden and metal structure, and 
and people driving by and people walk by you know it's, just, it's not not isolated we're in a town called North Ferrisburg and uh, and it's all this class analysis going on you know in different songs and rhythms and texts people stop by you know and they they're on, on the road and they stop their cars and they listen for a while and they drive by and they look and you see the next day to come by at a different point in the rehearsal and they stop by and they get that part of the play and the play is telling telling the story about you know how the class system works and how the people on the bottom you know take it out of the ground and put it on the next level and the working people turn it into something and they send it up to the middle class people who sell it and and the prophet that goes past the military and the, and the church who praise it and protect it um, you know, it goes to the top, to the rich, you know, who like uh, grab it all and then send down everybody's uh, pay, you know. Like they send down the military their pay and the middle class gets their pay and the working class gets their pay and the poor people get their pay. Then everybody sends up all the rent they pay in their life. And then people send up, you know, all the taxes they pay all their life. And so what we're doing, we're out there in the land and it's right near a road and like people come by all the time and, uh, I don't know, it's like... Uh, and stick around and rap with it. It's, a, it's an interesting thing. What's been happening here in New York City? <laughs> What's been happening here in New York City? Nothing. What else? Garbage, man. <laughs> the rent. <laughs> That's all that keeps going on. The rent. Oh. In the caves. I don't know, man. It's it's ridiculous. Like, I, I mean, you can hardly afford to eat anymore. And I mean, that's real. You know, like, like a lot of people that I know are on, you know, uh, welfare and stuff. And I'm freaked out. The, pe the people can't af hardly afford, you know, red beans and some ham hocks, man. Ham hocks is 98 cents a pound, and ham hocks ain't nothing except the knees off a pig, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I'm flipping out, you know. What are people going to do, man? You know, and what's going to happen? I, I can't, I can't even imagine, man. It's crazy, and it's happening all over the city, all over the country, man. Well, it's happening all over the planet too. Which brings me to, to a song we could slip in here. When we're talking about drought and such. So it's from a, a poem of. This is it. Poem of Allen Ginsberg's um, called Jessor Road, uh, September on Jessor Road, which he wrote about the refugee camps uh, around Calcutta after the Bangladesh War and uh, changes it around a little bit because basically it talks about what's happening in Africa now and what will be happening in a lot more places unless the people of the world can uh, assert themselves in a different way and because uh, the people who control most of the resources aren't terribly interested in their distribution and I don't know how many thousands and hundreds of thousands are starving to death right now you know which problem would be exacerbated. And I think it's one of the, a lot of, the a lot of the information that's coming out now in this country is to make people afraid because they're not really managing things well at all. And even here, it's hard to eat and getting increasingly difficult and will with uh, a few bad years, a few mean years, and uh, wipe out a few people. In any case, this is a, a drought.
desert moves to the sound. Grass disappears and the kettle die out. Blazing sand littered with bleaching bones. Millions of families are hopeless alone. Millions of souls, 1974. Homeless in Africa, where the drought has taken all. Thousands, thousands of dead, and the millions who can walk to the towns, still to stop and bring out tons of the world for the woe. Bring out your voices for the love we don't know. Ring out your bells of electrical pain. Ring in the conscience, American brain. Watching the skies, belly swollen, big round eyes. Millions of mothers desperate in pain. Relief slow and coming, officials explain. Thirst processions, families walk. Stunted boys with big heads don't talk. Look, bony skulls, silent brown eyes, starving black angels in human disguise. Bring out the tongues of the world for the woe. Bring out the voices for the love we don't know. Bring out the bells of electrical pain. Ring in the conscious American brain. Weeping and he points to her sons, standing thin-legged like elderly nuns. No vegetable money, no work for the man. Grain lasts for days and they eat by the can. Then children starve three days in a row and vomit their next food unless. Tongues of the world for their woe. Bring out your voices for the love we don't know. Bring out your bells of electrical pain. Bring in the conscious American brain. Bring out. Bring out. Hear the food rots. Many are the hungry. We've also got millions of chickens destroyed each week. Conglomerates say they can't afford to sell cheese. How many million children are we who are lost? Whose are these daughters we see turn to ghosts? What are our souls that we have lost care? Ring out your musics, weep if you dare. Ring out, tongues of the world for their woe. Ring out your voices for the love we don't know. Ring out your bells of electrical pain. Ring. 
in the conscious American brain. Bring it out, bring it out. This is WBAI in New York City. Steve Ben Israel has just left the control room and he's going into the studio. He's gonna take somebody's axe and carve out a song. Taking Larry Estridge's chair. 
taking Larry Estridge's earphones, taking Larry Estridge's guitar, put a cigarette in Larry Estridge's ashtray, smiled his own smile. <laughs>
So it seems we ain't got much to go on, but we're going on just the same. And we're going on in a name, in a name of old people's pain.
and everything around us is still so cold, so dark. from Larry. Yeah? yeah? No, the dope song. The soap song? The dope song. The hope song? I got a request for a harmonica stomp. Yeah. <laughs> You're in good voice, Steve. Steve? Oh, yeah? You're saying good, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. This is a part of a song that uh, when September 1st 1984 rolled around when they passed those heavy obscene cruel drug laws in the state yeah. and uh, this was sort of uh, the comic relief for a show about that horror and it's a little bit about uh, the people who bring it in you know and their changes over the last couple of years There's a, a, a word in this song that's no longer there, but the man behind him is there. It was in 1969. I met an old fella, dope, a friend of mine in Morocco town, in Morocco town. He said, hey man, I'm tired of hanging around now. You know, I've been to Kabul, Bombay, and then peaceful Turkey. But the way Nixon and Rockefeller getting their shit together, man, I'm paranoid to bring in a key. Now, you know, I brought in thousands of pounds of that good old smoking hash. And I turned on a lot of my friends here And I made myself a lot of cash Oh man, it was Ibiza in the winter And Mykonos in the fall And the way I got those spine jingles going up and down my back I sure all knew this was my call But I've been here now in Morocco town for three months, man And I'm beginning to get pretty weird of course, I can't come up with some new idea to cross the frontier to get my hash over there. And let me tell you, I was uh, walking in Casablanca and I fell into the cat's bar when I spied a poster on the wall that I know was not put there by Allah. The poster said, Keith destroys your body and will dumb up your brain. But when I went closer to the poster, I saw it was printed by the friends of Watergate. Oh, Nixon shit, Rockefeller shit, there's a lot of that gone around. And if you want to bring your thing into New York City or State now, you gotta be much cooler on the ground. Yeah, he said to me, man, let's sit down and have ourselves a couple of hundred tokes. And maybe we can come up with some new idea to cross the frontier So we could have our joke So we smoked and toked And toked and smoked Ourselves into oblivion When all of a sudden I spied one of these large candles that I've been making I said, man, how about a half pound within? Well, he uh, jumped up and down and got all excited And he gave out a very big laugh and he said, man, that idea is going to cross the frontier. When I get it together, man, I'm going to give you a whole lot of cash. Well, I said, man, I just uh, want to wish you lots of luck and that I hope I see you in a while. 
And that the next time that I see your big face, I sure hope it's got that special smile. So it's three months later in Paris town, at Rue de Valde Grasse, when I picked up Time Magazine International and I spied the latest Buster Hash. I was President Nixon holding up one of our candles right up to his big bad nose. And the dog that sniffed it and the man that trained it was striking a very proud pose. Oh, Nixon shit, Rockefeller shit, there's a lot of that part around. But if you want to bring your thing into New York City or state now, you dig it, you gotta be much cooler underground, yeah. All the Stalinists and militants in Berlin would say, what is all of this, you know, heavy energy with talks? You know, can't make a revolution if you get high. Hi, you're on the air. Did you want to talk on the air? Hello? Hello. I guess not. Uh-huh. Well, she wanted to hear a request. So why don't you play something you think she might like? <laughs> yeah, let's show you.
shaking all the town with a hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Baby, don't you want to go? Yeah, take me home. To that old high mountain, sweet top for so and so. Sometimes you just don't know, but it's all in the cars, it's shipping on the brain sand. And you do the best you can, yes, man, oh man, woman. Well, now you say it from the town, clear on down. You believe you find your feet, then you realize you don't have the ground, but yeah. Just all years in the play. Check it out, man, on dance at me, okay. the goal.
down from my shoes. I had the wrong tuning, but I still had them old walking blues. This morning, looting around for the mouse. Yeah, good job, still had the mean old walking blues. I was running down the road. Don't throw stones in my pathway, but sometimes it seems like the myth. Oh, Sisyphus says a rock in his way and he can't hit it out. Yeah, it seems like he pulled it there in front of himself. Hanging out on that old crow's box shell. The ragged three thirty blues. Maybe you turn a disc and we take a roll. What? The the pilot has left. Sometimes in no old play to settle down. Sometimes the weight more than you can shoulder. Now you're knocking down at the ground. Thoughts 
well But then all the morning star is rising There's all them unresolved situations Then young, you just can't even make no sense. Oh, but there's something in the street that's right ringing. There's a music that won't let you fall. Integration, yeah. Seem like ain't got no friends. Then who faith it comes a knocking? No pride when it takes a bow.
worked all life with his hands. Get something for the table, we'll return. We can breathe a bit differently. can't hear anything through these heads. I guess we don't need them. Really, do we? Not unless we're oh, talking, no. Get down. Yes, I see.
guess I'll be that way until the morning when I die. I'll be that way until the morning when I die. Sugar and Blue and uh, Larry Estridge is accompanying. Uh, I want to know how come you started to sing at this hour? God, I really 
send you. Sings the blues. He's on the standing room to the sweep up there saloon. It's time for clothing. But to fill her glass again. Must be numb ten Yeah, that don't count the plan He's riding on the hip hop Nobody sings the blues Like no white woman do She got a voice, it's sweet life Honey, in a kind of way. Violence in the blue. Like no white woman do. She got a voice that's sweet like honey in any kind of bourbon you can find. to the table, man. She's looking for just one thing, man. She's looking for love. You can stand up when she's done. She might take you home or go, go with you somewhere. Bound to sing the blues Like no white woman do She got a voice Sweet like honey Oh yeah She sings the blues, yeah Like no white woman do She got a voice that's sweet like honey And any kind of Blue. He's only standing room. 
Did it sweep up the snow and the town for closing? They fill a glass again. So it must be number 10. There don't count the pine. She just had in the dressing room. Brownness in the blue. <laughs> like no white woman do. She got a voice that is sweet. Like a honey in any kind of wine. Yes, it's in the blue. I know what I'm gonna do. She's got a voice that is sweet like honey and heroin.
not marimba. Kalimba, 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 kalimba. Whew. Sugar blue. And Larry Estridge. I hope you both come back. Thank you. Now sit here. Say bye bye. Say bye bye to the microphone. Bye bye. Again. Bye bye. More. More. Hello. You're tuned to listener-sponsored, non-commercial Pacifica Radio, New York City, broadcasting at 99.5 FM. WBAI, if I didn't say that. But maybe I did. What does it matter? You can howl a little if you like. 